Andy Reid or Patrick Mahomes? Who really deserves the credit for the Chiefs' success this time around, man? I mean, this is what, their fourth Super Bowl together that they've been to? Mm -hmm. And they lost one against only the Tom Brady, the other ones that they've won. So, you know, and, and Super Bowls, what, what is Andy Reid is three He's and two. Five. Three and two, right? Yeah. Um, and the only time he lost was against my, uh, my boy Tom Brady. So there, there's one interesting thing that got brought up, and I just I just want to call this out. When you really think about it, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes' success, no matter how successful that they are, is always going to be tainted by the fact that not only Andy lost twice to Tom Brady, but Patrick lost once to Brady and that he's regarded right now as the GOAT. Regardless of what he does, they're going to always say that. And it's not like he could do anything about it. Dude's retired. He can't avenge that loss now. Yeah. But that's just – but you know how people are going to be at the end of the day. He can win nine Super Bowls, but you didn't beat the greatest all the time at the time. And that's going to suck for him because he's going to have to hear about that his whole career. Right now we're not hearing about it. We're just saying, you know – the dude is the baby goat and can be the goat in the future. But is he really? Because we know how people are. They're going to say that, and they're not going to give him his flowers. I mean, it, it just is what it is. I mean, if you're going to use that logic, then use the logic that is Tom Brady really the goat because he lost against Eli Manning twice. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, Eli Manning didn't really beat him. <laughs> it was Don't the whole team. Nick Foles now. Don't forget Nick Foles now. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, and Nick Foles. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So... Uh, Logan, Andy Reid or Mahomes, who deserves more of the success? You know, I, I look at this the same way I look at Belichick and Brady. It's team effort. I don't think either of them, it's more them that's making the team succeed. It's a 50-50 thing. Mahomes, I'm sure he couldn't coach the team, and I'm sure Andy Reid can't play quarterback. So it's a 50-50 effort. They're one of the greatest head coaches of all time, top three in my opinion. Mahomes is probably going to go down as either the or one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the game. It's a It's a combined effort, man. They both deserve the credit. Both deserve the credit, but if you had to choose one, is the question. Mahomes. Wow. Mahomes. Vic, any rebuttals to that? I agree with Logan. I think it, it's an equal share. It's 50-50. You look at the, the Chiefs offense the past three seasons, the loss of Tyreek Hill. You have no name wide receivers. The change of the offense because they have no running game now. They depended on that, you know, a lot. Even though Clyde Edwards Hilaire wasn't doing his job, he was still getting it done at times, getting chunks, 100-yard games. But then you look at, you know, Isaiah Pacheco, although a great, powerful runner, he's not really getting the yards that they need. So they had to change up that offense, you know, and – Give credit to Patrick Mahomes. Again, like I said, they didn't have that marquee wide receiver. They ha pretty much have no names. Valdez Scanley almost lost in the game, but yet, you know, Mahomes powered through. We all know when, you know, pocket breaks down, Patrick Mahomes still has is a threat to run. Patrick mm -hmm. Mahomes still is a threat to throw the ball downfield. So you got to give them equal respect. It's yin and yang basically right now with those two. But going forward, if you have to pick one, you know what I mean? I'm going to go with Andy Reid. Because, again, Patrick Mahomes wouldn't be the quarterback he is today without Reed and his tutelage. We've seen, you know, Reed is the quarterback whisperer. We've seen him with Brett Favre, Donovan McNabb. Uh, we've seen him with Michael Vick. We've seen how he changed Michael Vick's career. We've seen what he's doing with Patrick Mahomes now. So you got to give him both credit. But, you know, gun to the head, I'm going to say Reed. I agree with you 100% on that. Um, there's several reasons why. Let's not act like Andy Reid hasn't almost gotten to the promised land several times. And what has been his Achilles heel? Donovan McNabb just couldn't get it. He couldn't get that team over the hump, even in the Super Bowl. Too many, too many issues with, with, with the Eagles. And when it comes to the quarterback situation, he was not that bona fide guy that was ever going to win the big game. He wasn't the leader we needed. Exactly. Now, to add on to that, is you almost saw the same exact thing out of a guy that you could probably say had less talent than Donovan McNabb with Alex Smith. Alex Smith had a lot of success with the Chiefs. He did. Didn't have that much success with the, with the 49ers. You got to attribute that to Andy Reid. Mm -hmm. Andy Reid made him a winner. He made him, a, he made him from a laughingstock Sam Darnoldish type of quarterback 
to a quarterback that you had to put over the category of being he was the ultimate game manager right but Alex Smith was winning games for the Chiefs and that had to be because of Andy Reid the also the reason why I say now I'm a, I'm a big stickler on what have you done for the game as well Patrick Mahomes was just a missing piece to this puzzle it just is what it is that's that's how I see it now I, I like to look at Andy Reid's coaching tree as well and Think about how much success that these guys have had. Sean McDermott, right? John Harbaugh, who's been to one Super Bowl. Matt Nagy, who is on his staff right now. Mm -hmm. Doug Peterson, been to a Super Bowl. Uh, you had Ron Rivera, been to a Super Bowl. Todd Bowles, been to a Super Bowl. Pat Shermer, Leslie Frazier, Steve Spagnuolo, who he just played against. Brad Childress. These are all coaches that have been under the Andy Reid coaching tree. Don't forget John Gruden. And mm -hmm. John Gruden. That there, a lot of people, a plethora. <laughs> yes, that are not going to get their just due. So all that in combination, you got to just say that Andy Reid not only makes champions out of coaches and has them set up for the rest of their careers as well to be well-respected, but no matter how great Patrick Mahomes is, I still think this is the opposite of what we're going to hear later on down the road. Was it Bill or was it Tom? Well, it seems like it was more of Tom. But in this situation, was it Andy or was it Patrick Mahomes? And if and if Patrick Mahomes has a decline after this man retires, it's not going to be any question on who who had the most success for the Chiefs. I but, don't think he's going to have a decline personally, but time will tell. No, nah, I think that kid retained pretty much everything that, that Andy Reid has been putting into him for the past, what, five years? Pause. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> you know, mentally and, you know, through the game. And, you know, he, he's had a lot of tutelage. Patrick Mahomes has been one of the best quarterbacks since coming into the game. He had one season to sit down, and he's been off to the races since then. He mm -hmm. hasn't looked back. And you got, like I said, you got to attribute a lot of that to Andy Reid. Andy Reid is a great offensive mind. And it was like he finally had the quarterback that didn't have any limitations to his offense. Yeah. I mean, it's so hard, though, because Patrick Mahomes has been so good. And people always try to take away what he's done. And I'm tired of that. Just like everybody tries to take away what Brock Purdy's done in the league so far, too. I'm tired of the. I'm tired of this, man. These, like Brock Purdy, was one game away from being in a Super Bowl, one game, and he got hurt in the first. What the first drive of that game against you guys, uh, against the Eagles? Uh, first quarter. I don't know if it was the first drive, but it was the first quarter. Yeah, it was. It was like either the first or second drive, right? And Vic knows, like, if that dude was in the game, that game could have been closer. He gets to this game. Some coaching, play calling blunders. Why are we running the ball so much? Why are we not taking a chance? Why are we not putting it in George Kittle's hands? Stuff like that. That it, that wasn't, you know, as as much as Brock Purdy has done this year to have 4,000 yards, one of the only quarterbacks that had 30 plus touchdowns this year. The dude had a really good year and an 80% winner percentage in his first two years. He'll be back too. Mm -hmm. And I think we've pulled the gun so early on saying it's going to be Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, or it's going to be Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow for years. I think it's going to be Patrick Mahomes and Brock Purdy for years to come. Well, the thing is, too, you have to understand a lot of those quarterbacks you mentioned, they're in Patrick Mahomes' backyard. So just like Tom Brady before him, holding Peyton Manning back, there's going to be a lot of people who could have said, had Patrick Mahomes not been in my division, I could have won a ring. Brock Purdy's not in the same division. So, yeah, you can say in the future, you can see that happen. You can see Jalen Hurts. But for Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, it's a tough road ahead of you, gentlemen. It is a very tough road ahead of you. And the only person that can stop him, that can change the narrative on that Patrick Mahomes or that Tom Brady, Peyton Manning thing, is how everything's going to turn out with the Chargers. I was just about to say yeah, that. Justin Herbert is the only, he is the key to their decline if if things work out. If not, Patrick Mahomes is just going to reign supreme for the next, what, 10 years. And if so. I could just mention one thing about, you know, everyone complaining about what the 49ers did and didn't do, I think it's a total discredit and disrespect to the Kansas City Chief defense because you saw them dog tired. Hands on heads, hands on hips, breathing heavy as possible. But you saw Chris Jones in there telling them, this is it. 
This is the one game that, you know, you got to put it on the line. We've been here before. We know what we have to do. Let's get it done. And they did. So you got to give credit to Steve Fagnolo and that whole defense. Yeah. Let me give credit to Spags, one of the top three greatest defensive coordinators in the history of the game. Two with the Giants, two with the Chiefs. Nice job, man. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I think that this conversation right now, and depending on how mm-hmm. things end up, it's going to be very interesting down to when Patrick Mahomes gets inducted to the Hall of Fame because it's uh, he's a Hall of Famer right now. It is what it is. Yeah. Say what yeah. you want. The conversation's over. He's got his ticket to Canton already. Yeah, he can walk away right now, and he's he's set. It's it's the Patrick Willis effect right now in him. Does it? He could retire right now, and you put him you put him mm-hmm. in. So mm-hmm. this is what. <laughs> I, and I know Cam Newton's been talking a lot, but let me make this comparison. With how much talent that Cam Newton had, if he was on a team like this, I'm not saying that he would have won three Super Bowls, but he probably would have been Canton with just his numbers in one Super Bowl If at this point in time. He was then, that talented too. I would say yes only for the fact that I mean, it goes back to the question before because of Andy Reid. Because let's be honest, when you look at this Kansas City Chiefs team compared to that Carolina team, they're less talented. Aside of Patrick Mahomes, they're less talented. You got yeah. Travis Kelsey, but even this year, second lowest in reception since Patrick Mahomes has been with him. Lowest in yards, lowest in touchdowns. I think he only had five. This was pretty much his worst season since Patrick Mahomes with him. So he wasn't really a key factor. And, he's, and he still won. Yeah, and we were and thinking in the middle of the season, exactly. like, the Chiefs ain't going this year. That's why when people <laughs> say, like, you know, Patrick Mahomes overrated is that offense. Nah, you got to understand what that guy has been through, especially for the past two seasons and what he's been working with, and yet still yeah. coming up with a ring. Um, I did want to say shout out to people that just be are just so disrespectful to some of these players. I want to shout out my boy, McCole Hartman, for not only getting traded to the Jets, but them believing that he's still the player that he can be and had two of the best plays in the Super Bowl. That, what, 60-yard catch that he had where he burnt both of them dudes, and that, that ball was thrown short, and he still caught it. And then and then the touchdown catch to, to, or, you know, to seal it in overtime. Shout out to McCall Hartman for getting your redemption and shutting all your, all your haters up, too. Hey, and did you see that defensive line? What did I tell you? Karloff is going to switch back and forth, and sure enough, that you saw Trent Williams didn't know what to do with himself. I saw oh, him. Yeah, he was getting, he was getting thrown around. Bro. <laughs> he's all saying he's the best offensive line in the NFL. Go ahead. Andrew Thomas Butter. Um, and shout out to, you know, our boy, Trent McDuffie. And when you mention yeah. a man's Ooh. name, <laughs> yeah. two time Pro Bowl, one time yes. first team All Pro, two time Super Bowl there. champion. Good corners do come out of Washington. I don't want to hear that. I think the, the best the, the best thing about this game was San Francisco for the whole season was acting like bullies. And then when they against, went against this Kansas City defense, they met real bullies. <laughs> bullies don't say nothing. That's what you got to be afraid of. Be afraid of the person who doesn't say nothing, stays in the corner quiet. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about that rah-rah guy that's talking all that junk. He ain't nothing. He's and, talking and it's he funny. Anything. And it's funny. They got three of them dudes on their team that are going to be – Man, if they keep playing the way that they're playing, they're going to be future Hall of Famers. Three mm-hmm. of them. Nick Bolton is one. And I told you how important he was going to be in the game. Yep. Trent McDuffie I, I, I is I don't know two. about Hall of Fame for Nick and Bolton. And George Karloftis. Are you serious right now, brother? Do you know how many tackles Nick Bolton gets every single he's year? He's a great his, player, but his I don't tackles know about alone Paul. are going to get him in, bro. Listen, he said his man, tackles you, alone are going to get him in. Bro. Nah, you know how they said, like, if you draw a line in the sand, you ain't going to cross that? That's Nick Bolton. He's that line. <laughs> I was telling people, bro. You remember when uh, – who was the one that jumped up and caught that ball and Nick Bolton was the one to bring him down? Was that, was was that Juwan Debo? Jennings? I can't remember what receiver it was. It was like right at the beginning of the game. And Nick Bolton like literally shot over from the other side of the field to make the like play Superman. on him. I was like, see, try to tell y'all. Key player. They, <laughs> they could have had a couple of interceptions, Bolton, McDuffie, and Sneed. Yeah, he got bumped off from that. And, and, and then that's up, the thing. When people are talking about Brock Purdy and all, he wasn't a game. Like, listen, that kid was trying his damnedest. That defense was just too fierce. He was he was trying, bro. And then you knew, you knew they were fierce when they just kept going back to the running game and running up the middle, and not getting nothing on some of them plays. Nick Bolton and Chris Jones just clogging up the lanes, bro. And I'm like, Chris is like, probably, let me get to the outside where I might have a chance, brother. Because <laughs> running held up the middle, held them to eighty yards. Mm-hmm. 
Bro, I was. Hold on, Logan. Did you say 200 yards? You said 200 yards rushing. I remember that. No, no I said 200, said 200 yards of offense. Uh, he, I was about to say, he got 160. You're close. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. 40 yards, 40 yards off. But that's. I that's didn't say 200 yards of rushing. Hold on, bro. <laughs>